Because our kids deserve better. You hear of teachers having to use food banks, teaching assistants having to use food banks. That really has an impact on our students because even though we love the job, there are many teachers that are leaving the profession. I've only been in the profession for three years, but already how the cuts are affecting teachers and the students in our schools is so evident. And I have friends who have already that I've trained with that are already no longer in teaching, and that's because of how we see our jobs being affected. Currently, as a teacher, I'm, I'm having to use second-hand equipment and try to do the best with that. The resources aren't there, the staff aren't there. There's not so much money for trips, there's not so much money to buy new technical equipment, <laughs> there's not so money actually to buy outside supply. As a non-core subject, the concern is that we will get less and less funding because we have such an issue with retention, we have less and less teachers who are able to teach the subjects. Non-specialists then have to start to teach languages that they may not be a specialist in, and it all has a knock-on effect on the quality of education that our kids are getting and how our work-life balance is affected as well. The TAs have disappeared, so we are replacing that well, however we can. Extra work for social work that has been cut as well. So yeah, we are not teaching anymore. We are doing firefighting in the classroom the whole time. Our kids at school who might identify as LGBT+, haven't got access to proper counsellors and mental health workers because of that lack of funding. So that is affecting their well-being, it's affecting their ability to make progress in their lessons. Today is the start of LGBT Plus History Month as well. This year is 20 years since the repeal of Section 28 when we couldn't do these kind of things in schools. That's why I wear this t-shirt about an inclusive curriculum because it's important that everybody is included. As part of the union and also part of the school we have an anti-racism or diversity group where we're trying to um, raise issues about decolonising the curriculum where we want departments to look at their curriculums and make sure that they reflect true history and reflect also diversity that we see um, uh, around us. What happens is that kids don't see themselves reflected in the curriculum and a lot of them lose interest because of that. They don't see a place for them in, for example, maybe science, that's what I teach, in art, drama. They don't maybe see it as a natural option for them. Education matters! Support our schools! Education matters! Support our schools! Education matters! Support our schools! In Wolfram Forest, we support staff. They had a fantastic turnout, nearly 86%. And we know that without our support staff, there's going to be a massive workload problem. We know how much they impact on the kids that are the most in need of good quality education, in particular one-to-one. -one. But it isn't just teaching assistants, it's the office staff, all the people that do the admin that make our lives as educators a lot easier. We are passionate about supporting education and supporting our young people. No support staff would cross the picket line here. Our struggle is the school struggle as a, as a whole system. And that's why uh, our head teacher is supportive. That's why a lot of head teachers are supportive. Waltham Forest is amazing um, to see people you know, kind of unite together to fight for different causes. The district have really brought schools together. Because when I joined the school, I didn't feel this camaraderie, kind of unification of schools in the borough. <laughs> More and more and more. Thank you. Me, supporting the 
supporting the teachers is not just about my own school but my own children's education as well. It's more about education system. So we care about children's life. With um, the SEN children, you know, they, they need to be supported, but it is it is difficult. The funding isn't all there for, you know, what we might think they need. The resources aren't there for them to actually take part in the lesson, and they can't because either there's no TA or like other resources, differentiating the curriculum enough so they understand and understanding their needs. I'm a cover supervisor, so we are covering teachers when they're not there. We were expecting to do teacher stuff until we actually took a stand and said we are not doing teacher stuff. We do not get paid to do teacher stuff. So yeah, we don't do. We cover, but we don't teach curriculum subjects. The workload is too much, and then resource, we need resource for the children, funding for the, for the school, so if you can see, just well done. By the way, this is just a test of the demo. <laughs> <laughs> better contracts um, and basically a better future for young lecturers. I'm quite old and I'm, I have a permanent contract um, and that's okay, but young people entering the profession are on yearly contracts, they're constantly under threat of losing their job and they have really poor pay which is not actually a living wage. It feels a lot like the sort of heads of universities see students as money in and lecturers and educational resources as money out. So they've got more and more people who have precarious contracts and aren't paid like Prep and Mark teaching huge modules which is, you know, it's rubbish for the students, it's rubbish for the workers and you can't build a future on that. You're moving from job to job, uni to uni and it's, it's impossible to sort of survive really. Last night we got the email through from our senior management that they're going to go ahead now with 25 compulsory redundancies. Um, that's down from the 140 that were threatened initially but that's only down because they've kind of gone through with a uh, voluntary voluntary service early um, severance early retirement scheme which basically created a climate of fear in which kind of colleagues some of whom have been at the university for upwards of 20 years have left primarily humanities departments. We're going to be balloting for local action. We have our own local campaign and, and our own local strike action with regard to workloads because at Roehampton, as with many universities, many lecturers are at breaking point. You pay these huge fees as a student and you know the heads of a lot of unis are making a lot of money, but it doesn't filter down. You're like, where are the fees going? Why are lecturers not being paid more? Why are, you know, sometimes you're arguing for resources to do teaching and do innovative things in classes. We're also here in solidarity with other groups of workers that are on strike. It's really important that we stick together and that's what we're doing today. Civil servants, it's about um, several years of below inflation pay rises. It's about risk to our uh, pensions, which we're paying 2% uh, more pension contributions than we should be, and no changes to redundancy terms. The government uh, last year threatened 90,000 job cuts. They did pause that for a while, but we are expecting uh, more threats of job cuts uh, next year. We're the worst paid across the public sector in terms of the offer that's been made of 2%. We've got 40,000 members going to food banks. We've got over 40,000 on universal in work credit. We've had an erosion of our terms and conditions for the last, over the last decade and it has to stop. So we've had enough and we're here with other unions and we're fighting to stand together because we're all in it together. Ultimately, we know there's only one enemy and they're up the road there in Westminster. So we have to get together. All the attacks, they're coming for all of us. So we have to stand firm, stand together and smash the government.